G'day everyone and welcome to episode 3 of the build series. Today we are going to be cutting some holes in the roof and I am really nervous and excited to be doing it. It's a little bit different on this van than my last so it's going to add some extra challenges. Let's do it. Okay everyone, we have made it to the roof. If you've noticed there's coffee in hand, that is because it is thinking time. And I have to say, even though the roof on the Ivecos is only about, I don't know, maybe 30 centimeters taller than the Sprinter, it feels really high. Like, you'll also notice I have a shoes off policy on the roof. I'm trying not to drag stones across it from my boots. So hopefully I won't have to do too many trips back and forth. Okay, so now it's time to get into the cutting and the marking. And I just wanted to show you that the Iveco actually has another issue that is different to the Sprinter. If you've seen Sprinter roofs, you'll notice that their ribs all run in a really uniform direction and it's like a nice kind of even pattern. Have a look at the pattern on the Iveco roof. And now you'd think, well, surely they made those squares to be the right size for a fan because that's what they did on the Sprinter. On the Sprinter, there's certain positions that are designed to fit a ventilation fan and it's 40 by 40 centimetres. Not the case here. None of them fit. The squares are just too small. So I'm going to have to work out some other ways to fit them in centre. It's going to involve building it up with a bit of mastic. Let's go. So this is the spot that I'm choosing for the middle Max Air fan and it's kind of the only place that it can go dead center is right in the middle of this groove. But unfortunately, it means the cut's gonna be right here, which isn't ideal because it means that there's a slope going down to where the hole is. But if you look at the outside flange, the outside flange comes over onto this high rib part, which is good because when you think about when it rains, rain's going to want to go in these gutters. So this part isn't too much of an issue. It just means I'm going to have to really build up the sides with cork and mastic to make sure there's no leaks in there. And so now I'll just do the same for the other two. Okay, all the spots are marked out. I am just gonna tape them, protect them from the jigsaw, and then it's time for cutting. I don't know if you can see over there, but Dad and Judy are always at work on their farm. Can you see them down on the creek? So just before I do the initial cut, I just wanted to show you this. I've just set this up underneath to catch any of the metal shards so they don't all go into the van. All right, nothing else to it. <laughs> Something just fell down inside. Uno momento. Definitely through. Alrighty, let's have at it. No. Oh. 
guys. I don't know how terrible this lens looks to you right now, but I've actually just destroyed this lens. So I actually just took myself away from the van and the camera for a little bit then because, you know, there's, you know, those moments where you realize you've screwed up and you, you just want to go back and change it. Well, that was one of them. This, uh, this lens, yeah, and it's $2,500 in Australia and looking at some of the video footage that it's taking out, the lens still seems to work. Um, so I'm going to use it for now. I'm sorry if there's any smudges or anything you can see on it, but it's just the way it's going to be. And here I'll show you what it looks like on the GoPro. So you can get a bit of an understanding of what's happened to the lens there. You know, shit happens. It's just obviously really frustrating. And you know the real worst part? The bloody square's not even big enough. The freaking fan doesn't fit in the hole. So I need to widen it. Well, at least one thing worked. I'm gonna clean up, call it a day, and reset tomorrow. Good night. Good morning, so I am back at it and I have to say it's amazing the difference just a good night's sleep and a good meal can make for your morale. I am going to go straight back into tackling it and I feel incredibly fortunate that the lens is actually still working. So, yep, straight back into cutting and believe it or not, I think that the angle grinder is actually my best bet because the next two, I actually started with the easier one. I did finish it last night, so it does fit now. But I started with the easier of the three holes because the other two, there's even more undulation in the surface. I'm still going to attempt the jigsaw at the start, but if that doesn't work, I'm going to go back to the angle grinder and just make sure I keep this lens at a big distance. All right, so it's not the prettiest, but that was a hell of a lot easier. All right, everyone, so it is finally time for the big one. I've been saving the best till last. So essentially the plan of attack is for any long flat section, which is good, this has a few, I'll use the jigsaw, gives a nice clean cut. And then for any of the undulation, I'm using the grinder. I'm trying to use the grinder as little as possible because the amount of heat and sparks that it comes off and it just doesn't do as neat a cut. I'm going to smooth all the edges with a metal file and then I'm going to clean up all the metal shavings off the roof and do a really thorough job of that because if you leave them on there it leads to rust. So now I'm going to put some rust guard primer just all around the edges to protect the bare metal. I know it's late in the game but I thought before I go any further I better introduce you to the fans and the skylight I'm using and my justification for why there's so many of them and why they're set up the way they are. So. As you see here, this is kind of the setup that's on the roof. So I'm gonna have one fan towards the front of the van and then one towards the back with the skylight over the bed couch setup. Now these fans are Max Air fans. They're really good because they can stay open even when it's raining. And the reason I got two is because when you've got a fan up either end, you can have one on suck, one on blow, and it provides really good circulation. And I did think that combined with the skylight, it might have almost been overkill, especially because I've got another fan to go inside too. Really, I had Oki in mind when I got this many because I wanted to keep the van as cool as possible, and this is the best way to do it, save for having an air conditioner, which, you know, I'm not gonna have the power to run that when I'm off grid. Now, the skylight, is a Dometic MIDI Hecky. It's 500 centimeters by 700. It's the biggest I could get that would fit that size and still allow me to have overhead cupboards. I'm really excited about this and excited about being able to see the stars either when I'm in bed or in couch mode and just have some really good natural light coming in. All right, so in a perfect world, you would have a flat roof and a flat space to install your fan on. As I've shown you, that is definitely not the case in the Iveco. 
So the problem with doing the frame is if you look at this, now you can see those undulations that I had to cut through with the jigsaw and see how low they go. If I just put a flat frame against that, there's going to be that huge gap here and on the other side, there's another one there. And then, so when I went to tighten the screws to pull this down, it would be pulling, bending this in. It wouldn't be a uniform grab. And the problem with that is if it's not at all flat on top, then it can leak and that's how you get water in your roof and you're going to have a bad time. So I've got to figure out a way to make this wood flush with this roof. Okay, so if you ever try and do something like this on your own, you're inevitably ha gonna have to get creative. I don't have like those big stands or whatever to, to hold that up to the roof. I needed it up there, so this works, you know? Okay, so now we have a bit better look at the line we kind of need to get to cut out of the wood here. The way I'm gonna figure out that line and try and get it as exact as possible I'm going to use this tool, which I got off Greg Virgo's channel. He does van conversions. A lot of you guys like him, and I highly recommend checking him out as well. He's a pro, absolute pro. So the way this tool's supposed to work is the point of it goes up to where it needs to be, and your pen will follow that line. So if I start here, I've pretty much made it just long enough. As you can see, it's actually ruled a pretty good line, the dark line, and that goes all the way around. So fingers crossed, this actually puts it up nice and close to the roof. So it is well after dark, and I stayed up out here just finishing off literally that first frame. Good night. Morning and welcome to day three of this project and day seven of the van build in total. I have to say I woke up feeling incredibly grateful this morning that I had a workshop big enough to house the van in because it rained pretty heavy overnight. This is what I came up with last night. This is one of the frames and yes, it is quite over engineered. Let's see if it fits, then I'll get on to making the others. All right, so this was definitely the trickiest one, so I hope it fits. Now just two more to go. Okay, so I am about probably eight hours into the process of constructing the three frames and I know I have probably gone over the top with how I've engineered them, but my idea is, so especially with the skylight, it says in the manual, if it's not a flat surface, you can't fit it. So as you've seen, this is really not a flat surface, so I've got to make it one. Now, for my frame, for this piece, I wanted to also make it a bit of a support brace to give a bit more support to the roof, considering I moved this rib. And by the way, moving this rib was not easy. The guy on YouTube, Iva Van that I watched, made it look super easy. Looked like it took two minutes. For me, not the case. Just move a rib, they said. It'll be easy, they said. But... Okay, an hour and a half later. I think I may have it.
All right, Rob, good on you. Is that going anywhere now or what? Where's it going? It's going bloody nowhere, eh? See, it's going nowhere. But anyway, so I need to have some more support here. So I figured why not make the frame cross member here also some of the support. So I've made this. So when the skylight sits in, it's gonna pull into this, pull it nice and tight, and it runs right across the roof. I'm gonna fix it on both sides. So it'll add a bit of extra roof support too. What the hell have I created? The moment of truth. Not bad. Not bad. All right, so nothing left but to have at it and get these fans in and the skylight. My plan is to work through one at a time and that way, hopefully by the time I get to the skylight, I'm a pro. I'm gonna use Sikaflex to glue these frames to the roof and that'll also help stop any rubbing noise or anything when it's moving. I'll clamp that, then get up on top. That's how it is gonna happen in my head anyway. So far, so good. All right, as the sun starts to set on day three, come to two realizations. One, I bought nowhere near enough of this. I've got enough to do probably one fan today, so I'm gonna to have to pick up more tomorrow morning. And the other realization is it's Sunday today, so I really hope to get the video up to you guys tonight. Um, obviously that's not gonna happen, so sorry it's late, but you can see that I tried. Good morning, it is an absolute beauty today and I very much hope the last day I'll be doing this install. It's day four of it. Yes, I'm wearing the same shirt as well. I have to do a lot of washing, I've run out of food. Once I dig my kind of teeth into one of the projects, I kind of don't really stop until I get it done. So I really need to get it done today. I know this has taken longer than I planned and the video is probably gonna go a little bit longer than I planned as well. I would hope to think that this is showing some people out there that maybe aren't trades people that doing this kind of thing is super achievable but it's going to take a lot of work and you know if you buy a van to convert yourself be prepared to put in time and effort and have frustrations and make mistakes but hopefully by watching videos like this you're going to learn from a few of my mistakes and you know not make those along the way as well. So just before I jump straight back into it, as usual, I wanna answer one of the comments from the video last week. First of all, I wanna say thank you so much for the kind response from last week's video. I loved that you're all getting so into this and I really hope that you follow right through with the build process. All right, so the comment came from Liana Lovejoy. G'day, Liana. She said, thank you so much for such thorough explanations and bringing us along step by step. Thank you for watching. And do you name your vans? In the past, for some reason, we didn't name the vans, but I definitely plan on naming this one. So put your name suggestions in the comments below. I think it'll be easier to get a more accurate name when you see the final product, because I'm gonna go for a very themed look, but I'd love to hear, you know, it's a huge space. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay, let's finish this. Thank you. Thanks, Kiki. <laughs> All right, so I think I have enough caulking to do about 20 fans now, and the sun is shining so much so that even the sheep are hiding in the shade at the moment. Okay, I'll give you a quick rundown of the step through with this middle fan because I tried to last night, but it was super windy. Essentially, the plan of attack is spray and clean with a paint prep degreaser around the edges so it's a nice clean surface to work on. Then I'm gonna use this putty tape and layer it up. And you can see where there's lower parts, I'm gonna layer up the putty tape so it'll finish with one even layer for the fan to sit on. On top of the putty tape, once I've got that flat surface, I'm gonna put on some neutral structural silicone. And that's just gonna be, just to really smooth that out and make sure it's nice and flat. And then this will sit on top and then you screw in. And my final layer 
is this Eternabond roof seal tape. A lot of people use silicon over the top of the screw heads and to protect around the outside, but I've used this Eternabond tape in the past on my last van and it is unreal. It no, no water gets through it. It makes a really neat job. So I'm gonna use it instead. That second Max Air fan successfully installed and I'm really happy with the way it went in actually. It was a much flatter surface and it seems to be a really neat job. So the final and most challenging one. This one, I'm gonna go with a very similar concept with how I attach it down. The difference is I'm gonna to have to trace around it and layer up the bottle and kind of, I won't have a quite as sure idea where the flange is going down. So I've just got to line it up perfectly. It's a bit narrower where I can put the butyl, but otherwise I'm excited. I'm so close. All right, so the sun is setting on day four. I am refusing to let this not be the final day. I just lined all the edges. It probably took an hour at least, maybe longer. Now, there's nothing to it but to put it in. Holy shit. It is down, I think. <laughs> it is down. I just really hope this doesn't leak because I never want to do that again. It's nice and flat though. And so now it'll pull tight from underneath with the brackets. So that should clamp it all down. So it is done just like that. It was a piece of cake, if only. And I wanted to quickly show you the skylight because I'm already in love. It's gonna be pretty bright looking through it, but here are the mechanisms. So to work it, you just press that one in and it can go to this position, which I think 60 degree open, or you can put it up and lock it in this one. or the shorter one. And then, for when, during the day when it's open, it's got this nice little fly screen. And at night, if you wanna sleep in after you've seen the stars, this nice little blackout line. Whew. Guys, thank you so much for persevering with me through that install process. And just remember, if that seemed like a longish video for you, that was four and a half, almost five days of my life just completely consumed by this. It's still not 100% perfect, but it's very close. I'll be doing some minor adjustments. Some lessons I've learned from it, would I would say is when you cut the holes, don't try and cut them exact. Give, the, give yourself a little bit of room, otherwise you might find yourself doing extra cuts and it becomes less neat. Also use the right tools, make sure you've got some the right blades on hand. And finally, you know, don't put your camera lens anywhere near an angle grinder. I was just talking to a mate who said he was grinding all day filming it and didn't have any issues, but just turns out mine was in the wrong place at the wrong time. If you liked this video or you appreciated the effort that I put into filming it and doing it all, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to go over and check my Max and Oki channel. And yeah, I'm thinking about doing a live stream on there next week. So let me know if you're interested in that. Otherwise, guys, I'm going to clean up. I'm going to sleep for about half a day and then get straight back into it. See you next week. What are they doing? He looks like he's going to walk across the tank. Do it, bro. I think I've lost it.